Well, probably high time I looked at this. Um, I've got to tip it on its side, which means more oil and muck will come out of it. This thing's sing proud here and flush there, so that's crooked. Not leaking, I'm not going to touch it. That's pretty scaly. I wonder if I should just throw a water pump on. It's really indented there. That's pretty scaly. Pretty horrible. I think what I might do is remove the water pump. So whether I do an engine for this in six months or 18 months, it isn't gonna matter. If I buy a new pump now, and put it on, I can always take it off and stick it on the other engine. It just might be a bit thin in terms of wall thickness. So I think we might remove that. And just give him a good clean. You know, it was clean up here. There was oil on there now because it leaked out from up here, but I think we'll um we'll have a look at this. Um I don't want to do any mechanical repairs to this aside from Welsh plugs. So we'll pop this pump off. Not a bad idea, when you hear the rain, I can't do any other work, this is why I'm doing this now. Not a bad idea when we take this out to make a note of which ones are blind and which ones go into water jackets. Um, that will determine whether or not I use a GM sealer on it. You can see rusty water and so forth, or rusty residue coming out from behind there. The, um, The condition of the pump isn't too bad though. That goes into oil. That's old. And there's no, you know, the bearing's quiet and so forth, but I think the best thing to do with that is to pop a new one on. As we said, we can reuse that. So much crap in there. There's a lot, just all rusty, dusty stuff. So we need to get all that out, or as much as we can. We'll just hose it out. We'll take these two top ones out. These small Welshies are really difficult to get. To come out, a bit tough. Well, that one wasn't too bad. Being high up, they're probably not subject to the sort of rigors that the bottom ones are, but they're still not very good. take those rear ones out too I think. Right, so we've got those five out there, we're the main ones. The other side we're not touching, I've probably got the back. It just goes against me hitting this thing while it's up on a stand. Um, Right yeah. Ew, you are going to be a bastard, aren't you? It's right up against number four. Um, maybe it's a bit tough to get out. I'm just going to swing it around this way. Oh, there we go. That's not bad at all, actually. That feels like it's aluminium. Oh, look at this. There's a bed of silt. Really deep. Look at this one. be it for extraction of Welsh plugs. Except those ones which we said as before we're going to leave there. And then we'll be fairly clean up there because, apart from Celestic, because all the muck falls down. Right, the only other one 
is this one here at the end of the balance shaft. That's not a welsh plug, that's a casting plug, so that can stay there. I'm not worried about that, it's not cooling behind it. So, next comes the arduous task of cleaning this a bit more because it's still really, really grotty. Ah, oh, dear me, we're still cleaning. Look under there, it's still dirty. Um, now I've got a light, you might be able to see all the crud in there. See all the dusty stuff down there? I want to get that out. Uh, yep. And down there. And of course, in there between the liners. Uh, can you see? Hang on, maybe if I move that, see that muck down there. Well, who's bored? Hands up. Yes, Pete, we're bored. We don't want to watch you scrubbing an engine down with a toothbrush. I want to tell you a couple of things though. I'm using a toothbrush and I'm not using dirty thin, I'm using dirty prep so I sort of most of the garage thinner I had I sort of ran out of it and I don't want to use it in here because obviously I can't do it inside, it's raining and I've got cars in here so you don't want thinner sort of flicking up onto the panels and affecting the paint. Perhaps I won't do that if it does hit anything, it doesn't matter, you just wipe it off. Um, so it's just wax and grease remover, panel wipe if you like, and get sort of up underneath it. I've done the other side. The other side's a lot cleaner than this. Um, what did I say? Um, probably because the oil was fresh that dropped out of the fuel pump, it was sort of all over the place. But not just that, the casting is actually smoother on the other side. So I'm just going around with this toothbrush and a small screwdriver, breaking stuff up and then wiping it off with bits of old jumper. This stinks a bit, I think. This was left outside, I think some dog's weed on it. I'm not sure, but it doesn't smell too pleasant, but for this sort of thing, it's fine. But the moment you sort of break it up with a little screwdriver and then hit it with a toothbrush, it all just falls away anyway. There's something there. So I'm gonna continue um, doing it this way. It's easier than getting degreaser in a can because that tends to go everywhere when you hit it. It's got quite a high velocity to it. Um, when it comes out of the can. Whereas this I can regulate and control a lot easier in this environment. Um, and again, more panel wipe. This is superb this stuff. I would actually be happy if someone gift wrapped something and gave it to me for a birthday or Christmas. You could give panel wipe to everyone. You can give it to your wife, your children. You just have to make sure you don't put it in a food container because you can't drink it. It will kill you. So it's really good stuff. It doesn't smell. Like I'm not using a mask, I don't like, um, like for example petrol, gasoline, if you use that, you're going to know about it because you'll be passing out. It's horrible stuff if you sit there in an environment where it stinks so much and you haven't got enough fresh air around you, whereas this stuff doesn't smell. Um, probably doesn't even stick your beak in it, but anyway, you can see these bolts are starting to divulge themselves. Toothbrush plastic is impervious to it, so we can use a toothbrush. And I'm sure, I'm absolutely positive that you guys are bored out of your brain. So again, I'll turn the camera off and I'll flip it back on when we're finished. doing any good either. Let me go down here. Yeah, yeah where's my torch? Um, I'll turn the compressor off. I don't want much pressure really. Whoa. You gotta say this. Should cover the engine up, shouldn't I? It's done. God damn, this is foul. You know the worst part? I have to wash the Sigma off before I wet sand it, because otherwise this stuff would be really abrasive. One of the worst things you can do in your garage. Man, that sucks. I've got a message. Look at this. 
<laughs> oh, Joseph XW. Wow, that is pure oil. Anyway, it does look clean inside. I could probably lose my mask now. Hang on a sec. Phew, that's better. Man, that was unpleasant. I should have figured that it happened. I was going to flush it out with water. I thought, you know what, I'm just going to do it with air. Um, where's my little flush line? What have we done with it? I run one of these channels, it's, this is what I'm doing, but you don't need to follow what I'm doing, because I'm probably not very good at it. Hang on a second. Right. Oh, yes, that's rather spiffy. That's pretty clean. There's still a tiny bit on the ledge down there, but I'm not worried about that. Um, we're just dusty. And much cleaner down in there. That was always fairly clean, because all the silt sort of went down the bottom. I don't have these two plugs here. So I'm going to have to buy them. I forgot to clean that bit there. There's oil and crap there. So I'm going to get rid of that. And we'll give it a final clean, eh? What do you think? Are you happy with it? I'm most happy with it, even though it's out of focus. In fact, the engine looks better out of focus. Because you can't see how cruddy it is. Right. I've cleaned up. I swept the floor. Put a new bit of cardboard down. Changed the snappy. All that sort of stuff. <clears throat> so we're ready to do further cleaning. We've got it sort of, yeah, almost clean, but it's not there yet. Um, we need to be able to wipe it and no silt comes off, anything like that. So from here, we've got all the oil off, all the junk, sorry, all the sort of baked on grease and that sort of stuff. We just haven't got the oil film off yet. Um, so we can use brake clean, but I'm not paying 10 bucks a can. I'm using panel wipe. Woohoo! This stuff. Um, this is great. It's cheap. If you keep your can, go to Milsom's, it's four bucks for a litre, so it's a lot cheaper. And I'm going to shoot it. Now, I'm not going to shoot dirty panel wipe, obviously, because I'm going to use my touch-up gun. So I'm just going to shoot some panel wipe on. I mean, this stuff's great. I mean, you know, in the 80s, I couldn't get a partner. I was shy and awkward and all that sort of stuff. And, you know, I got to the 1990s and got a haircut, which is a total lie, because I had really long hair in the 90s. New shirt, new pants, bought four cans of panel wipe and had lots of partners. And wouldn't it be funny if life actually worked like that? Whoa. Anyway, I probably should cover that up, but I haven't. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the air right down. And I'm going to make this into a spike. Nope, that's not how I want it. It's got to go up that. Yeah, and I'm just going to use this as bright clean. Oh, this is dirty. And I can really flush it down. I might go and put a mask on, actually. But these sorts of things, like that, comes up like a treat. Are you happy? I'm happy. I'll be high as a kite in a minute, though, because I've got to put a mask on. Just give me a sec. Check this out. That's all radiator dust. <laughs> Sorry, um, coolant dust. Move you back a bit. So it gives me more room. That looks positively dandy. Right. This is when you do want paint runs. Uh, we're getting there. Give me a good hose. Still doing a little bit of cleaning. I've got this power steering bracket on. I'm wondering if the um, original timing case is the thing that should have had the embossed part there for the other bolt. Uh, we can use a bit of flat bar. It's going to have to be bigger than that, and I'll make it a bit thicker as well. Um, and I can have it up on an angle, maybe notch it a bit, but there's a casting there, you probably can't see it from where you are. Just so I can cover these two 8mm um, bosses. And it'll continue that line of the bracket down, and I might just stick a couple of gussets in, here and here. 
just to give it a bit of strength, but that will brace that across three eight millimeter, eight millimeter bolts, and of course the fourth one at the front. I think that'll be fine for the power steering. So it doesn't look like that's going to be very arduous. It looks like it's going to be quite easy. I just need a piece of this, or actually a longer piece. I'll get the thicker stuff, maybe 10 millimeters longer, and that's all there is to it. Okay, let's survey our engine. Oops, got a glove stuck to that. How does it look? Pretty clean. Oh, I'm fairly happy. I gave it another um, hit with the oh, hang on. hit with the brake cleaner. So there's a couple of moist areas like that, but that's just evaporate stuff that needs to evaporate. Um, I've just finished giving it another bit of a wash, a spruce up, and you can see it's all pretty good under there. I think that's good enough. Um, so that we can leave it now. Although now I've said that, I've just noticed that dollop of muck there. So I'll get rid of that. Um, whatever the case, I think now is probably a good time to do Welshies. Six mil plugs in. Who's looking in there? Oh gosh, I can't see. All right, I'm gonna mount this on a tripod and we'll start with Welsh plugs in. Right, there are 11 plugs on this engine, which is nuts. We're not doing the other three on the other side. Uh, and we're not doing this one here at the end of the balance chart, but the rest we are. We've got 250s, a 40, and 428. These guys. It's an insane amount of plugs to go in an engine. And when we do these, we've got to figure out how we're going to stick them in or what implements we're going to use to put them in. If we go for something like that, it might be all right, but it might be a little bit snug. We don't want the plug coming out around the socket, so we can't get the socket out when we're done. Um, this 40, that's fine. That's actually a really good size. And the only thing I've got for a 50 is going to be that bearing shell. So, da, 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 with a hammer, it should be alright. Before we do anything though, we've got to clean all up in here with 120 grit. Make sure it's nice and clean. I'll clean them out with um, some prep sole as well. There's still some snot in there, so we need to get rid of that. So, I will set about doing that right now. So they do feel a little bit dirty. I'm just going to run around here with some 120 and get them so they're nice and smooth and I can see bare metal. Don't to go too carried away. Just get any of that muck off so they're nice and clean. I don't know if you can see in there. Yes, we can. That looks pretty good. Pretty fiddly. These smaller plugs are quite fiddly to get to. Right, so I like to check the original plugs against the, the new ones. These are a little bit shallower, these brass ones, than what the original mild steel ones were. If there's any doubt, you know, just here's the base of a vernier. I'm just going to use a screwdriver with my fingernail. Check the depth. We're spot on. So we can knock these in so they're flush with that inner ledge there. Um, check all of them. The small ones, for example. The smaller ones are quite broad. They're a bit deeper. I can find them. And they can actually go in a little way. I'm not going to, I'm just going to do them flush. And that should be okay. My preference is GM Sealer. This is a very old can. I just took the lid off to make sure it's alright, and that is, which is cool. Um, some people will use some sort of RTV. Um, Stag is another one they use around these things. Um, I don't like RTB with this sort of stuff. I like this stuff. It's just something I've always done for the past 35 years or whatever I've been doing this for. Um, and I've had a good deal of success with it. So why don't we let the games begin. I'm gonna change my gloves. I've got oil over them. And we'll get going. Right, these aren't particularly easy, these small ones, because of the balance shaft housing here. I'm just gonna smear a bit of this stuff around the inside of the hole. It'll do two things, it'll seal it, and it'll also um, provide a bit of slip for the plug as it goes in. I'm just gonna stick a bit around the plug as well. So I'll stick, oh, I'll stick the plug over. Sticky stuff, these aren't easy as I said, they're quite a pain, because they're, um, it's hard to reach. And it's not the sort of thing you're gonna just hit twice and get it in, you're gonna sort of muck around with it a bit. See? You're taking it off and you're checking. So 
and biasing the hit so that you know you're getting it flush. And that's it there, we're good. So these are actually quite tricky, they're not nearly as easy as um, some are, like that one would be a lot easier because I, well, I can access around here, I can sort of smack around it. But Start bouncing, now it's going in, I can feel it. Now it's sinking right in. A bit more. Try a bit more, I'm going to bias up here now. Just to make it spot on, cool. So yeah, it's a sort of a, a thing you get with feeling airs, yes, but it's not a difficult thing. It's just fiddly under here. Just if I had a longer bit of tube or something, it'd be much easier. But we're going to work with the tools we've got. Now I've got a big 50 millimeter mother sucker here. We'll go around the inside. This is great stuff. It's dear though, I don't even know if they make it anymore, GM sealer. It's made for um, bolts that go into water jackets, uh, water pumps and stuff like that. That's actually what it's made for. But when I bought this can a few years ago now, it was 40 bucks or 38 bucks or something, a lot of money for what it is. Right, you know, but it's messy. You've got to understand that. It's really, really messy stuff. I've got the blunt side down here, yes I do. It's going in. I can feel it. But it's better doing that than using a socket that's too small. If you use something too small, it's going to dent the center of it and take the tension out of it. Okay. Now what we're doing is we're aiming to get this one flush with that center part of the thing. I can feel that, that's cool. That one's ready. We're not quite cooked on this edge here. But I think we are there. I'm going to call that done. I reckon that one's good. So we did the back two. And then we're out of the woods with Welshies. Normally, I like to paint a block. And then put these things in. Because they look good. But because we've got the others around the other side, they've already been done. We're not going to have one lot painted and the others not. So I'll just paint the whole lot. Right, well that'll give you some idea what the painted engine looks like. Um, I've just masked it off and just painted the side of the block. I haven't painted the pan, which is probably a funny thing to do. Um, won't be long before we can sort of stick all this lovely um, plated kit in. And, uh, new oil filter, I started picking that off. It's still a little bit sticky and oil pressure switch and exhaust manifold and so forth. There is the um, rock cover. It doesn't look new, of course. It's got all, it's still got a few markings and bits and pieces. I'll probably clean a little bit further, but I'm not too fussed about that. I'm pretty happy with how it looks, and I think that'll suffice. It's just painted in um, air dry enamel. And of course, I haven't done the balance shaft cover, but um, a few bits I've got to rectify, a bit of overspray there from under the masking. Uh, but otherwise, it'll do fine. I'm actually quite happy with how that looks. What I'm not happy with is this thing. It's absolute junk. I sort of knew it would be, but I thought it'd be good for mocking up. The packaging was knackered on it. And you can see it's all sort of broken through at the bottom, so I've asked for a refund. I don't even think I can, I can use it as a mock-up thing, but we'll get it out and have a look in a moment. Um, power steering bracket, we're finished. Got a little gusset in there. That will sit like that. It lines up beautifully with those two things there. This had to be very, very shallow um, because it interferes with the so the belt adjustment side on the uh, power steering pump. So I got that knocked out of the way. Right, well, let's have a look at this. Um, this is probably the most appalling display of pedaling rubbish I've ever seen. I wanted it for mocking up, but I don't even think it's going to be good for that. Uh, it looks like the box has been sent back and then sent out again. It's sort of all taped up. As we said before, the packaging is absolutely rubbish. Now, there was no foam there was nothing in there it was just in a bag and you can see how damaged that is it's munted it's had it so um in the box we get turbocharger with a couple of gaskets the intake and exhaust for the oil or the intake and dump for the oil i should say a leaf load a bolt uh, with a couple of what's that oh there's a little grub screw and a couple of copper washes 
Um, what else? You can't expect much for the price of these things. Um, that's your little V clamp and that sort of thing. Even that's crap. But the real crap is what's in the bag. And if I pull him out and put the box to the side, this is diabolical. So let me explain why it's so diabolical. The scary part about it is that some poor soul would consider strapping that to the side of an engine and it in itself would be a huge mistake. These are supposed to be factory set at eight pounds and I can barely move that. It feels like it's on about 28 pounds, not eight. Um, the castings, yeah, whatever. I don't even care, but the big disappointment is the side play in the turbine and you can see, or the compressor wheel I should say, it's almost hitting. There's a full, how much is there? At least a millimetre. Now, turbone, I don't know what the hell that's supposed to mean. This was supposed to be, I was only interested in the T3 side, which is this side here. All of this is the same as a Garrett. Now, these aren't any good for a draw through setup. They don't use a um, carbon seal at the front. They've got like a piston ring seal. They've got a journal type bearing, which is the same as a Garrett which is like a bronze sleeve, if you like, with holes around it. So the shaft is um, suspended while it's spinning in oil, but it's just absolutely woeful. There's not much wear, pardon me, that would take, have to take place in that before it would start hitting the side of the housing and filling our little engine up with crap. So originally I wanted to do a video where we um, well, it looks like it's been balanced, that's one thing. Where we sort of pulled the housings off and messed around. Um, but it's just not going to happen. It's not going to happen at all. If they don't return it or refund it, I'll leave them seeding uh, feedback. Because that, you put that on an engine, it, it's just asking for all sorts of trouble. It's that poor in terms of the quality. I wanted to be able to modify or to mock up a downpipe, the oil lines, uh, the manifold, all sorts of stuff. Which I could probably still do at a pinch, but uh, the fact I wasn't going to use this, I just wanted it for mock-up, was not accidental. It's the fact that it came in such poor shape with no packaging. So, yeah, they're getting, they're getting this back. And if they don't take it back, stinky email, stinky uh, <laughs> feedback. But be warned, you know, this is cheap. I knew it was cheap. You're not going to get much for your money, and it looks all right, but... Uh, never ever contemplate sticking one of them on a car you're going to end up with tears uh, you know the fact that it's so sloppy on the intake and it's brand new is terribly terribly poor I think I think it's awful but it is what it is it's very cheap one of the things I had noticed is that a lot of people a lot of Chinese goods have really improved in quality and that's actually really really good uh, and there's been a lot of positive things said about these sorts of turbochargers. Some people even suggest they're manufacturing in a similar place to the name brand ones, but I'm telling you now, I don't think this one is. Um, it might be one of those luck in the draw things or luck off the draw things where you get good stuff some days and you get crummy stuff other days or whatever, but um, I don't see it with this. The other thing is the wastegate spring is, oh, goes that way, is so hard. And this is so soft. So I would imagine this would start to inflate uh, before it would even activate that. So very dangerous putting that on an engine. Right, parts, what have I bought? That DeWalt kit from Crossless Bolts, $39. And it's got the right size hole saws for the XC wiring looms for the power windows. Jason's in the middle of doing those now. In fact, I think he's finished the two rear ones. Stabilizer link bolts. Ah, here we go. Knackered. I can't use that. Can we get a good look at that? It's all sort of worn out and that would be moisture retention. So our bolt's taking a hit in terms of its strength and also uh, specification. Um, again, cost less. That is, is that grade 8 or grade 10? How many slots are there? 2, 4, 6. I think that's grade 8. I might be wrong with that. These ones, grade 5. I think that's grade five there, but can focus. Stabilize the debushes in the nice black stuff again. The sway bar and all the powder coating will be back in a day or two. 
Also we have, which we're going to have to wrap up again, the uh, X, Y, X, W heater tap. And we're going to modify that to fit our Sigma heater box. And I'm really happy about that. That's quite expensive stuff. It's like, 80, <clears throat> pardon me, $80, $90. But it will help us through. So that's great. It's half inch, which is perfect. I've just got to press test the heater core. And then all that stuff can go back in. So I'm really pleased with that. And of course, we send this large box to Harvey. Our two instrument clusters are here. The GE one and the original GH one. Because he can use some of the parts in both of them to make an even better dash than we've got. With a couple of warning lights that we didn't originally have. It's a crummy box. It's made out of a couple of other ones. But that goes off to Harvey tomorrow. Well, let's get ahead of ourselves. And take this paper off. We're not putting any of this stuff on permanently. I just want to see what it looks like. And a spiffy dipstick. Wait till you see the piece de resistance. You get called every name under the sun for this. Look how clean that is. Ugh, we'll just see what it looks like, hey? We've not got gaskets or anything like that on. But it'll give us a vague idea what we've got. These are the fuel pump nuts. The ones that were on here weren't nearly as fresh. They were sort of rusty and looked a bit horrid. But ah, a bit of a laugh, hey? That was quite spiffy, doesn't it? Where's the other bit? Hang on. Oh dear. I've got a heat riser. And what I'm doing with this um, can just sit there. You can see how sort of dull they are once they're rusted. But that doesn't matter. There's a heat shield that goes, a triangulated one that sort of goes here, but I'm not putting it in. But that will give you some idea of what things are going to look like. Uh, I'll just stick that there for now. Am I an idiot? <laughs> what do you think? So there it is for a bit of a laugh. The worst thing about this is it looks pretty good there, but it's still the same dirty old engine inside. And there's our cover. Well, that's it for this one. In the next one, we'll have all the powder coating back. And we're going to have to take a look at this and some of the other stuff as well. And start cleaning it up, testing that choke out, see if we can mess with it a bit. And addressing some of the dirty rubbish in here. Starter and alternator and that sort of thing. And then I think we'll just stick this sucker back in the car. I'll have the water pump by then too, and I don't think I need to do anything else. I think we'll just stick it back in the car. I want to get it back in quickly. I found, uh, one thing I don't like, I don't like the thrust bearing. Replacement thrust bearing is 45 bucks, but there's a joint with clutch kits on sale for 85 bucks. So it might be worth just spending the extra whatever dollars and sticking a new clutch in it. I don't know, there's nothing much wrong with the old one, but I think we'll just bang it all back in the car. I want to get this thing running before too long. Until then, thank you very much for watching, take good care of yourselves, and I'll see you around.